Hey guys, it's Robert again from Australian Camping and Four Wheel Drives and uh, we're down here at the uh, Drifter store again today and uh, we have a special guest here with us today. Come on in mate. G'day mate, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah. Brett Hooker here. G'day everyone, how are you? Yeah, so it's great to see Brett here down here today. He just popped into the store. I know, I was just down here to buy some stuff and then there was cameras, so you know, things got out of control really quick. Exactly right. <laughs> and yep. uh, we thought we'd grab Brett yep. and uh, we'd have a little bit of a chat about some of the products we've got sitting in here behind us. Yep. And uh, we'll get him to Yeah, go I'll go through them. Yeah, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of these products I already use, so it's easy enough for me to talk exactly through right. how I use them. So we'll just, we'll just go across. Yeah, them. sure, yeah, sure. Great. So what have we got here, mate? Look, today? I'm start in the middle of the pile because there's things on the side of the pile that are more accessories so if we just start in the middle of the pile and then I can explain how the accessories help. Right, but right. the first, first place I want to start is absolutely in the axes right in the uh, the hold to four axes and I love what Drift has done in this and if for those of you that have followed for a little while you'll know the full story yep. but for those of you that don't know the full story um, Drifter brings in these axes but what they do is they actually finish them themselves okay. so they actually take the handles and they actually finish the handles with sandpaper do extra work there and re-oil the handles and they do those uh, these leather yeah I'll come to I'll come to that yeah but they even oh. they actually spend their own time Shut on them. the edge right so they come you know they come from the factory good to go but they actually spend a little more time on that and really get the edge right yep, yep. and then so they started there but then they said you know if you're going to buy a really nice axe like that and that's the I think that one's the look that one looks like it's about the 650 in the in the length yep. um, if you're looking for the first axe that's the perfect one to get because it's exactly. a versatile axe you can chop a tree down with it, you can split a log with it and the um, the weight of it is really light yeah. so when you when you when you're using that a lot going that sort of medium weight axe is a good place to start once you know how to use this axe then you go oh okay let's look at the other types and I'll get to those in a minute right it's actually interesting Brett's mentioning this as well hey because uh, one thing I found you know in using axes your short axes are actually probably I find really hard to cut cutting wood Correct. whereas these longer uh, handle axes when you go to cut your wood for your fireplace yep. they just seem so much easier yeah, guys, you've got to, as well you've got to have somewhere when you're striking with an axe you really need a good Good pivot oh, good right good and when you're up here on a short axe yeah. that's really just for chipping away at things yeah. so that medium but if you go to a long handled axe and you've not used it before it's like using a big long bloody golf club or something like yeah. that it's so far away you don't have self-confidence in where you're striking yeah. so that middle length axe is the perfect yeah. place to start okay. yeah cool. all right so then um, then Luke looked at it and said well if you're gonna have a nice axe like that and we've made all the you know we've put all this extra effort into tidying it up you really want to protect it yeah. so the first thing they brought to to market then for protecting it are the the drifter um, it's a sheath it's thing. a sheath yeah yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the sheath right but again you look at the quality of that they're actually using copper real copper rivets you know they, they put them in themselves these aren't just stamped out on a on a machine they've actually taken the time to think about what's the right kind of strength they've put enough in there to truly protect your axe so your axe head goes in there yeah, and then that just back. wraps around the back nice and easy to clip in and now it doesn't matter where you put your axe in you know mine lives in the back of the car all the time because you never know you never know when you're going to need it right whether you're clearing a track whether you're setting up for a campfire that axe blade is always protected but very recently yeah. um, yep. Luke's just introduced these collars now these look really nice yeah they? and again this just comes out of a this comes out of a love and a respect for axes yep. um, for those of you that use axes you know you know yeah guaranteed every time you think you're gonna hit yeah. the destination on the head but sometimes yes. sometimes you miss and I can tell you as, a, as an owner of one of these axes there's nothing more you know it really does upset you when you overstrike and mm -hmm. you hit a block of wood on here and yeah. you start chipping the handle mm -hmm. yeah. so these collars Collars are designed to protect just inside. I'll take the take the head off. So when you overstrike and you just miss the blade and you hit the wood in here, this will absolutely protect the handle of your axe. Yep. Right? Yep. It's nice thick. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. but it's nice thick leather. It's leather it does not matter how hard you hit a log with that; it will not damage the wood. It'll absorb the blow. Okay. And you know. They've got their new facilities to be able to stamp these things. The stamping on the machine on it as well. The spot on. As well. Yep, spot on. So that's the combination now. When you buy their axe now, it comes with the sheath and the collar. And as I say, what that's all about is just making sure that when you invest in a good axe, yep. that it's going to last even longer. Right? So, and again, for those of you that have been around, you know, I've, I've got axes that I've, I've had handed down from my family. And they're one of those things that when you love what we do, this is the sort of stuff you want to be able to look after for a long time. So that's about making sure you look after them. Excellent. All so right. What else we got? Okay, so then. Then, as I say, once you get used to the longer axes, then they have specialty axes. Like here's a little, little hatchet, the Razorback 
the Razorback hatchet, same thing, got good good protection, right? Wow. But these are just your little, you know, I'm just trying to split kindling, I'm yeah. just trying to do small work, super light. Could you use it for Yep, that's right. Again, you look at the, if you need to use, you've got the double handle there. A lot of people will use them here. But that's just for fine work. What's good about them is if you've got limited space and you just need to be able to take a small working axe, that's tiny, right? You can yeah. get that in behind your seat. Exactly right. Yep. Exactly right. And again, we have seats. Yep. <laughs> Let's have a look at these katana blades as well. Oh, you cool. want to have a look at these guys? Yeah, right. yeah absolutely. Oh, your, uh, no, no. Oh, mate, I could go all day on this, but I know you, other people. Oh, I love know. these katana blades. Yeah, so let's have a look. All right, so. Um, so these are the, the, the katana. So katana boy is the, is it's a saw, right? And they're called a pull saw. So the way these work is they only saw when you're pulling towards yourself as opposed to, again, you know, push and pull. Again, if you're not used to using a saw in a lot of places but you know you want to have a saw for, for, uh, for producing firewood, the pull saws are really easy because pull and then you can just push it forward and pull again. Now, let's see, I won't pull this one out of the box. It's no. the, uh, the tooth blades on uh, really large as well. Correct, right? yeah, I'll just, throw, I'll just show you with one of the... For one of the other models, I'll just pull this out so you can see it. There's this one's small smaller, version. right? But you can see the style of the blade there. Yep. And these are absolutely razor sharp, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but that means... Now, I've actually got one of these as yep. well, guys, in my car, hey? And I, I just mentioned something um, that I find useful, in, in particular with these uh, guys, is that you can store them behind your seat yep. or wherever you want your vehicle, yeah. and you can keep it there. Yep. And they hardly take up any space. That's they right. They come in a little pouch as well. Yep. So you don't have to worry about it cutting into anything. And because the uh, the actual blade folds into the actual yep. handle of the saw, which we can have a look at as well, yep. uh, it protects the, the actual teeth of the of the uh, saw also. Yep. So uh, we might just uh, we'll get one out and yep. we'll uh, we'll cut back in and we'll show you that as well. Right. Okay, we're back. Yep. So we yep. went and got one of the katana blades out, the katana yep. saws. And, let's uh, take a look. look at it. Yeah, let's take a look. So, as you said, that's the it, ca it comes in a case, which is excellent. So, just pop it behind your seat, in yeah. your drawers, yeah. wherever you are. So, let's have a look. let's have a look at this. And and um, so Drifter does have a good Drifter does have a good video about this as well as yeah, your yeah. video about this as well. So, yeah, if good. you want to go a bit further, the but good thing about them, guys, just yep. straight away, is the blades hidden. Yep, blades hidden in there. Right. Yeah. So, the first thing we'll do is we'll open it up. Right. Yep. So. So these guys, you just you just release you just release the mechanism here because yep. that's the lock mechanism for the blade. All right, I haven't released that enough. All right, push that down. There we go, just and we bring him out, and that clips in there. But you can also just lock, lock that off. Down. Now you're guaranteed your saw won't come undone. So there's those teeth we were talking about. I'll just rotate yeah. them up. They are razor sharp. They are razor sharp. Do not you know? Yeah. Do not try this at home. But they yeah. are absolutely razor sharp. And as I said. It's a pull saw mechanism, so it pulls this way. Yep. Now, let me tell you, cutting firewood. If you're trying to cut through a log, you know, that's around that sort of size, yep. um, you know, a lot of us don't want to take chainsaws. A lot of the national parks, you know, you just can't use chainsaws anymore. If you've got a choice between an axe and one of these to get through a log, Definitely this will be every single day, right? Yep. And you sort of go, oh, how can a saw beat? Well, this thing, you'll pull that much depth out of a log on a single pull with the way this is designed. So. This is the, uh, I think this is the 500, isn't it, Rob? Yep, yeah. it is. Um, you can get a slightly longer one as well. I'll show you that in a minute. But that's enough blade to pull through anything that you're going to put into a fireplace. Yep. So rubber handle, so very good grips there, right? And that just goes on the wood, right? And you literally just pull it through with a stroke, lift it up, bring it back, pull it through with another stroke. Okay. And it's a testament to the quality of the blade is when you finish cutting that wood, the side of the wood will be absolutely smooth like it was polished, right? Which just means you're getting a clean, easier cut. So Katana Boys, highly recommended. That's a big, a big saw, but as you see, right, you look that right off properly. Yeah, oh, all good. The same thing, right? There we go, that's all right. Um, there we go. Tucks away into the handle, so those blades are all protected while it's in travel, all right? That will not take up a lot of space, no. and you can see how narrow that is. So, highly recommended. You can put yep. that back into the bag, guys, and yep. go. we'll put that back in there. Okay. Now, we, um, we used this uh, when we were off on our last camping trip and all that, and it was great, eh? Yep. Didn't have a chainsaw or anything like that. We just had the silky saw and, and uh, yeah, just chopped up, up our, all our, our wood while we were camping. Right. Yeah, we've got a couple so, of sizes, there. So that's the one we were just looking at, yep. right? So that's got a 500 millimeter, half meter blade on it. But it's also available, and I'll get, the, I'll get this up the right way for you. It's also available in a 650, and that's just your comparison, right? Yeah. Extra 15 centimeters. 
Only go the big one if you really think you're getting into larger types of wood. Yep. So, because you, you know, it's bigger, you've got to store it. Yep. So you choose about what type of wood. If you're doing general purpose camping like most people, 500 is plenty. But if you know you're going to be getting into clearing a path and that kind of stuff, if you're taking a lead in a, in a four-wheel drive trip or things like that, that's when your bigger one becomes really helpful. All right. All right. So um, they have a couple of other ones here as well, don't they? Yeah, they do. There's actually a whole range of silky saws. And again, the idea is in different purposes, right? So if you're a hiker and you're not dealing with firewood, you're yeah. dealing with trying to clear paths and branches and things like that, you can come right down to something <laughs> even as small Look at that. as the, what's called the pocket boy, right? That comes in a, in a plastic protective case, right? But it's exactly the same, it's exactly the same design, right? There's, there's your release that comes around, that clips in. And now you've got a small, you know, small branch clearing, kindling, all that kind of stuff. But you can put that in a, in a, in a hiking backpack. Yep. Right? That's so it. that'd be great for, you know, you're going, going off on your hikes and that sort of stuff. Yep. You made it here even doing bike rides, eh? Precisely. <laughs> and there's plenty, of, there's plenty of people out there that are getting back into one of the things here. Well, one of the things I love that's happening in Australia at the moment yep. is uh, opening up the rail trails as, yes. as long distance biking. So even here in South East Queensland, we've got one that's about 300 kilometres long now. So yep. people are really getting back into bike biking. Right. So you've got so the little fine. ones. Um, but then you come up, there's uh, one here. It's just, just, and they're just different lengths now. That's called the Gomboy. So okay. just a little bit longer. Yep. Um, but then you get into the um, into the big boys, right? And these big boys, I reckon just about everybody's got one of these. Okay. Um, this is your absolute classic multi-purpose saw, right? Abs same same company, same design approach, right? There's your saw, yep. but it's so small when it's away. It is. But it's still got that 30 sort of 35 centimeter blade on that, and that'll cut through pretty much anything that you'd want to put in your fire pit. For, for when you're camping, but that will absolutely fit anywhere. Same thing, very, very sharp. And with, with these guys, you can get them in different tooth styles. You can okay. get it in a fine, a medium, or a coarse okay. tooth. I see, so, right. so you, we've got, uh, was it three different types up yep. there? Yep, that's right. So one says, what? Uh, what's so medium, so it just says it here. Uh, so you get a medium tooth. Yep, your right. medium tooth. Then yep, your large, large tooth. tooth. And then this one's got a curved blade. Oh. And you just use your curved blades when you're working in a situation where you need a bit of a hook around the, okay. around the branch. So when you're bringing branches off trees and things like that, okay. sometimes people prefer a curved blade. Oh, Large and medium. The large tooth is really just there for your, your softer woods and things like that where you just need that, you know, it's, it's okay to rip through it. Yep, yep. Um, but personal choice and you can buy spares so you can actually decide which blade you want to use. So, yeah, that's one thing um, that I did as well. I just ordered an extra blade and the reason I ordered an extra blade was if I was ever off camping and I did actually damage a blade or whatever, I had a spare blade there that I could use. So you can do that as well, guys. You can get extra blades from them also. Spot on. And with, with those big boys, um, Drifter also does a boot liner bag for it. Right. So for those ones, they don't come with the pouch like the bigger, the big Katana boys so. do, but Drifter took care of that, yep. and you can buy one of them. And again, that's the way to go, right? If you're just going to throw that in the back of your truck so you've always got it there, one of those right. is a great way to go. Great way to go. Excellent. All right. Oh, guys, so um, that's uh, pretty much all the Katana range here yep. that we've got sitting here as well. Perfect. And their axes. Uh, so like if you're off camping, you need wood, or you just need to help clear a path, there's a tool there for to help you out in the job as well. And they're nice and compact, easy to take all the time, so yeah, great, great addition. Cheers. I'd like, like to thank Brett for, for coming along today. My pleasure. Well, and uh, yeah. standing in and showing us a little bit around some of the products. Yeah, well. my, really, my really pleasure. appreciate it. Yeah, no, well, time. I use this stuff all the time, so I don't mind talking about it, Rob. So, cheers, mate. All right. All right, we'll catch you next episode, guys. Talk to you later.